Hello guys, I recently released a video about reusing form request class in API controller and in web controller and I received a few questions, something like this one, or actually I start with this one. So what to do if the API controller doesn't throw JSON response with JSON error, but instead shows default homepage? Similar question. What happens if validation fails in API and HTML view? It's a different scenario. And then third question, a bit bigger, but about the same thing. It's not returning JSON response. It's returning homepage when validation failed. So I think it's worth a separate video. Imagine a scenario. You have a form to add a product, the web form, which I will use fake filler Chrome extension to save the product, which works. But if there's something missing, for example, price is missing, it would throw validation error on the web using the same form requests. So product controller, web product controller uses store product request with array of rules. And then there's API controller, which also uses store product request with the same rules. The only difference between controllers is just the response JSON. But what happens if the validation fails on the API side? For example, from Postman, which is probably the most popular API client. So this is the success response. When I posted something new product, this is the result. But what if we do it again and now the product name is not unique anymore and it should throw validation error, right? We send and we get what? We get HTML not found. How? In fact, that HTML not found happens because I don't have a home page. Otherwise, it would redirect to home page. So in my routes web, I don't even have the home page for this demo project. It's just for the product resource. But why is it thrown HTML and not JSON? Because we're using Postman, right? So important thing to remember in Postman or in whatever API client you use, there is one header to be passed to Laravel request, which is accept application JSON. So you can type it in manually or I just enable it in my Postman. And then when I send this request, then we have proper 422 status code, the given data was invalid, and errors object with exactly the error message. This is exactly what we would expect, what API client would expect as a result, not HTML, but JSON. So you need to always tell the API server that you accept JSON, and then Laravel would take care automatically of returning the error in the right format. Now, how does it do it internally? Let's take a look. So if we take a look at the form request, it extends form request class, which in itself has a method called failed validation. So what happens if the validation fails? All it does is throw validation exception. And that exception is handled by general handler of Laravel exceptions. So illuminate foundation exception handler PHP. And then there's a method convert validation exception to response. And here where the main if magic happens, request expects JSON, then it throws invalid JSON like this, returns invalid JSON, or in other case, just invalid with redirect to somewhere, which is web request, right? Now, what is expect JSON? If we click here, we have another if statement. So expect JSON, let's close the sidebar, is if it's AJAX and not PJAX, you can take a look at deeper what it is and accepts content type. So this condition or once JSON and once JSON is exactly what we do here. So once JSON checks if acceptable header, which is acceptable zero in this case, contains JSON. So when you do accept application JSON, you basically land on this line of internal Laravel framework and then it returns JSON and not the web. With that in mind, one final trick, you can check for JSON in your form request file. So if you want to reuse the same request for web and API, but one slight difference, for example, one field is only for the API, like device name or something, you can add that here, for example, in the same rule, device name equals this once JSON. So you check that then it is required. Otherwise, it is empty, so no validation. Or you can just add that device name dynamically to the array because the rules method should return the array. So you can populate the array. Actually, let's do it pretty quickly. So rules are this, except for device name, and then return rules. Meanwhile, if this 
wants JSON, then we add rules, something like this. So rules is also device name required. Sorry for life coding. Yep, so rules like this, and then you return the rules, something like this. Maybe it's more readable than do inline if statement. So once JSON is available for you in the form request to make your form request class dynamic from web and API. I hope it's helpful and I really enjoy your comments on the videos because it gives me more ideas, even more ideas for these daily videos. So subscribe to the channel to get the new daily video and see you guys in those other videos.